Great. Um, so again, I'm, I'm Megan. I'm the Director of University Partnerships with the Green Program. I serve as the liaison between TGP and all of the universities that we work with in a variety of different capacities. Um, and I'm excited to have all of you here with us to explore the Green Program model, um, what our mission is, what we're all about, how we work with universities, uh, what a partnership is, what a partnership means, how we, how we uh, treat our partners, different models for that. And then I'll hand it over to Amy, who's going to talk to you guys a little bit more about her experience as one of our longtime faculty partners. Before we dig in a little bit further, though, I do want to do some quick housekeeping. So if everybody um, who's with us today could just quickly introduce yourself in the chat function. We'd love to hear who's with us. Um, so you can just click on the chat bar, quickly introduce yourself. Um, do keep in mind that we'd like for everybody to remain on mute while we're presenting. We do want to hear all of your questions. So as we go throughout the presentation, we do ask that you stay on mute. But if you could just put your questions into the chat bar, we'll filter them. And at the end, we'll have 10 to 15 minutes just to talk about what your questions are. So don't wait for the end to put in your questions. You can start now with the questions that you have. And uh, we'll try to get to all of them at the end of the presentation. Um, and then one final thing as we um, dig into the presentation, my colleague Jess, who's here with us today, she is going to be manning the chat bar. Um, and she is going to send a few quick polls your way just so we can get a sense for where everybody is at with their global ed. So some of you here with us today are a little bit familiar with the green program. Um, some of you are just finding out about us today. So as a quick introduction for all of you, the Green Program is a study abroad organization um, that is focused on sustainable development projects abroad. Our mission statement, you can see here, we're here to educate and to empower the future sustainability leaders through our program models. So our program is open and applicable to students of all academic backgrounds, and we work with academics across the curriculum to embed sustainability outcomes into their curriculum. We were founded in 2009 by Melissa Lee. She is a rock star for sustainability. She is, um, as you can see, she's won an award, a number of awards actually, including uh, Forbes 30 Under 30 for founding this organization. Um, it is also a minority and woman owned business. She founded the Green Program while still a student at Rutgers University. Um, and in the 10 years since, almost 11 years actually, since founding the Green Program, you can see a list of locations where we've run some of our sustainable development projects abroad. So digging a little bit more into our mission, um, what we wanna do with our study abroad programs is not just take students abroad to travel or to visit Iceland and hike on a glacier, um, but we wanna prepare them for the 21st century workforce um, with a specific lens and focus on sustainability. So making sure that students from all academic backgrounds are able to engage with sustainability topics to understand the SDGs, um, and also to attain key soft skills, quote unquote, um, like creativity, emotional intelligence, analytical thinking, active learning, leadership is a really key component of our program, communication, working in groups. Again, students come to our program from all different academic backgrounds, and they're put in a variety of different scenarios where they need to work together to come up with solutions to sustainable development issues. Um, so we have a strong focus on the skills development piece and the leadership piece of our um, employability goals for this program. We've also got a quote on the side here that I want to just read out to you. So we, um, I'll get into this a bit later, but we have a lot of different university and longtime university partners. Um, and one university that we've had a lot of students participating from and a long relationship with is, is Penn State. And we've been able to integrate some hands-on real world experience for a lot of their students, including in, the, in particular, um, the engineering departments and earth and mineral sciences department. And here's a quote from one of our colleagues at Penn State about the experience of their students and the skills they were able to get on the program. Um, so the Green Program is amazing in not only relating what academic programs teach to real world experiences, but also to integrating the academic outcomes. 
This is an outstanding experience that every student and related disciplines should have as it provides a multidimensional, multinational, and interdisciplinary experience. Um, so yeah, that's something that really encapsulates the mission of our program, interdisciplinary, um, multidimensional, and real world experience to prepare students for the, the 21st century workforce. So getting a bit more granularly into the model before I dive into each location, we are a short term uh, study abroad program model. So students are able to be flexible in their schedule. Um, programs are anywhere between eight to 10 days and they take place during the summer break all throughout the summer, we'll have programs running. We have programs running in the winter term. We have programs running in the spring break term, which is increasingly popular with a lot of campuses. Um, and students are able, or faculty members are able to pick and choose which of those short-term options best fits into their schedule. As you can imagine, um, as I dive a little bit more into what each program includes, it's a very intensive program. So we do have an application process that ensures students are really motivated to be, you know, hands-on the minute they get there, working on capstone projects, visiting facilities, having some adventure components, working with their peers. It's an all-day, everyday experience um, with a lot that they're going to be able to get out of that in terms of learning and employability outcomes in those 10 days. Each program is also for credit, so each location has a different institutional on-site partner. We work with leading industry and institutional partners in each location for the topics of sustainability that's tied to that program. Um, and the number of credits will vary from each institution and in what it might transfer back to at your home institution, but it tends to be around two credits um, trans as transcripted by each of our global institutional partners. Um, again, we're a program that focuses on sustainable development and sustainability that's very career focused. And we specifically have mapped each program location to help students engage with the sustainable development goals, goals on, in a global context. So each program location will have specific SDGs that are integrated across the curriculum of that global program. Um, and it'll be SDGs that they're able to engage with learn about in the classroom and then understand in a hands-on experience in the industry um, facility tours that they do in the classroom component that they'll have. And then especially in, in particular in the development of their capstone projects. So again, we're, we're all about facilitating leadership experience and entrepreneurial mindsets um, and a solutions driven approach to sustainability issues. And in each program, um, a big part of it is the development of a team capstone project, which tasks them to get into interdisciplinary groups and come up with an entrepreneurial solution to solve a pressing issue in climate change and sustainable development. So that's introduced to them at the start of the week. Um, and they'll work on that in their groups throughout the week with feedback throughout. And then they'll have that be part of the graded component of the program at the end. Um, increased accessibility. So again, it's during university breaks. It's at a lower um, cost than most programs due to the length of the program. We also do have a lot of funding support available to students, um, whether that be payment plans or our yearly scholarships that we run. And we, you know, try to support students um, from a variety of different backgrounds in a number of different ways. And we also have a strong focus on in embedding sustainability, global education and engagement across the curriculum. So we're not just working with engineers, we're not just working with students studying environmental science, we want to work with students who are business majors, who are economics majors, who are history majors, and bring them to these programs. And the program is developed in a way that the course content and material is applicable and accessible to all of those students. And they're able to learn from each other, um, bringing their different backgrounds academic backgrounds and other backgrounds to the topic of the course. Um, and I'll get into long-term impact in a, some slides later, so I don't want to get too far into it now, but we um, have an amazing alumni network and we really prioritize staying very closely engaged with them and also supporting them in their professional development, their continued professional development and growth, their continued engagement with sustainability, um, we work with them to be advocates, not just for the green program, but for sustainability in general. Um, and we also are really proud to 
and I'll get into a bit later, proud to talk about the achievements of our alumni and the proven results and impact that having a study abroad program so focused on the sustainable development goals and sustainability has on them in their behavior, in their attitudes, in their academics, and in their professional development and professional goals and outcomes. So now that I've given you a sense of the general program model and what's included in each program, I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth with each location that we have. Um, so one of our programs, we have four in total, is located in Peru, specifically in, in, in Cusco. Um, the focus of this program is on water resource management and sustainable practices. We do this program in partnership with the Universidad, Universidad San Ignacio de Loyola, um, USO for, for short. Um, they are amazing, just the faculty reviews of the faculty we work with. They're so passionate about this topic and bringing people from all over the world to come and get hands on with them, to hike around Peru, to eat the local cuisine, and then to engage with the topic of water resource management and sustainable practices. So in the Peru program, as is the case with all of our programs, there's community engagement components, there's engaging with the culture and the history, not only in the classroom, but outside of the classroom by visiting different communities and talking with them, um, all guided by our local partners. Uh, in addition to the community engagement component, there's also a heavy focus on industry access and exposure. So in Cusco, they'll visit a, a local uh, wastewater facility, um, and it'll be similar uh, facility tours with different topics in other locations. There's a strong adventure component. So in Peru, they will go to Machu Picchu with our local partners, um, and they also have some hands-on in the field classroom exposure. So they'll have classes administered by our local academic partners. Um, and then they'll take that, those topics and they'll get outside the classroom to really engage with it. So for example, um, in the Peru program, they'll, they'll talk about, they'll hike along a, a dead river in Peru after having had a classroom um, engagement talking about how that river got that way or what contributes to trying to clean the river, um, what facilities are impacting it, um, and then also how the different communities living along that river are impacted by it or that need it as a resource. And so every topic like that, for example, is given that 360 introduction. So they have the classroom introduction to that topic of how a dead river impacts communities in Peru. Um, they'll hike along it to actually see it as while they're having that classroom be led. They'll visit the facility that impacts the river and some of the pollution into that river. And then they'll also be able to see and engage and visit the communities who are um, using it as a resource and impacted by it. Again, um, as I go throughout the presentation, if you could just filter in any and all questions into the chat bar, we'll, we'll get to them at the end. I'm sure there's lots of questions as, as we go, so feel free to just type in all of your questions into the chat bar. Another program of ours that is a really fascinating one, they're all fascinating, but I think this one is really interesting personally, um, is the Fukushima Japan program, which is focused on disaster mitigation and nuclear to renewable transitions. I'm sure many of you will be familiar with the um, tsunami and then subsequent earthquake and nuclear meltdown that happened in Fukushima um, in 2011. And this program will take students to Fukushima to study this topic. Um, they'll visit the nuclear power plants in Fukushima and be able to have tours of those facilities. They'll have uh, classes at Fukushima College to learn about um, the history of Fukushima learn about nuclear energy, and also engage with topics about the transition set out by this prefecture to transition to renewable energy and away from nuclear energy. Again, we always try to have a heavy focus on local engagement and a very comprehensive um, introduction and engagement from a 360 uh, point of view to each topic. So for this topic, for example, of disaster mitigation and nuclear to renewable weapons, um, only talk about that in the classroom and learn about nuclear energy 
um, in all of its complications in the classroom, but they'll visit the facility. They'll meet with local policy officials who are overseeing the transition and talk about um, the difficulties in, in approaching it from a policy or political level. And they'll also meet with local community people who are um, living in Fukushima and undergoing that transition. Um, again, of course, we always try to bring people into the culture of each program and engage with the community and the history of each of these locations. So in Japan, for example, they'll have some mountain hiking, enjoying the beautiful nature of Japan. If any of you have ever been to Japan, you'll know how absolutely stunning it is from a natural landscape perspective. And so we do try to get them out there and engaging with the landscape in Japan. They'll have a tea ceremony, plenty of opportunity to eat all the delicious food in Japan. One of my favorite cuisines, as I'm sure a lot of people can agree with. Um, so they'll, they'll have the academics, the industry exposure, and the cultural engagement, in addition to, of course, the capstone project that they're working on throughout. This one, Kathmandu, is a really exciting program as well. Uh, this is actually one of our newest programs. We just launched it in December. Um, and reading the reviews from the, the most recent participants has been really um, motivating and, and fascinating. And I think this is a really unique program in, in the field as well. So I'm really excited to have this on the Green Programs portfolio. Uh, this one is done in partnership with Kathmandu University um, and it's for three graduate credits. So in terms of the credit for each program, this one is more than the others. And if three credits or more credits is what a student or faculty member might be looking for in approving these courses. Um, this could be of particular interest to you. I do want to note that although it's graduate credits in that it's administered by the graduate school at Kathmandu University, it's applicable to undergraduates as well. So you don't need to be a graduate student or a master's student or pursuing a postgraduate degree um, to be able to get these credits transcripted and to join this program. So the Kathmandu program, it's, the focus is microgrid systems for rural development. Um, this we do with our local uh, partners, Give Power, and students are able to hike into a village who is undergoing the transition um, from no power to having electricity through solar power. So not only, they first will have um, class introduction at Kathmandu University, to what they'll be doing to be understanding the um, more technical background to installing solar panels, as well as the cultural and political implications and motivations in Nepal for undergoing this transition to bringing more electricity and, and solar power to the, the variety of rural communities in Nepal who don't currently yet have access to this. So they'll have that classroom introduction at Kathmandu University. An interesting and exciting and unique part of this program is that um, students at Kathmandu University will sometimes join this next part of the program, where the students will then hike into a rural village, um, guided with our local partners, and then in that village who is undergoing a continued transition, they'll be able to, um, you know, get hands on and install those solar panels with the local experts and our local partners. And they'll be able to talk with the people in that community about what life was like before, what they're looking forward to in having this power developed in their community. Um, and I think that in we've got a really great video actually from our December trip to Nepal. And we'll send that in the follow up to you guys afterwards, but I think it gives a really good testimony to not only the unique um, access to building these systems yourself, um, and to understanding what goes into installing solar panels yourself, but also the community factor of being able to meet with a community who is in the middle of undergoing that transition of, of obtaining solar power. Again, of course, always engaging with the history and, and the culture in each location. Um, there is a, a morning yoga class included, lots of delicious local food. Um, and visiting UNESCO World Heritage Sites included as well, as you can see in some of these photos on the right. Uh, and, and finally, our largest program and our longest running program 
um, and one that Amy is going to be able to talk about in depth because this is her location for her faculty-led course, is our Iceland program. Its focus is on renewable energy, innovation, and sustainability. It's done in partnership with Reykjavik University, who are really a leading global institution for not just renewable energy, but renewable energy innovation, leading the way for the world in obtaining renewable energy. Um, it's also graduate credit, but again, not restricted to only graduate students on this program. Students of all backgrounds are able to access the curriculum and the content of, of this Iceland program. It's for 1.5 credits. And some of the things that they'll do in, in this program is um, they'll be able to talk with local community leaders, industry leaders, and the academics that we partner with at Reykjavik University about how and, and what goes into the fact that Iceland is, gets 100% of its energy from renewable sources. Um, they'll visit a variety of different facilities that contribute to this, like a, a biodiesel fuel facility. Um, they'll be able to, I, and something actually that I, I think is particularly powerful and that I hear time and again from alumni is that when they're introduced to these topics in the classroom, it's not just in the classroom and they'll take it outside of the classroom. For example, when they talk about the effects of climate change to, again, the beautiful landscape in, in Iceland, which I think, as many of you know, is a huge appeal to people wanting to visit Iceland, they'll talk about how climate change is um, rapidly affecting the landscape of Iceland. And then they'll take that classroom out onto a glacier and they'll have a hike and they'll, they'll be able to see it firsthand. And I think that 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 piece of this program really encapsulates the power of the Green Programs programs. Um, in so far as we take really pressing issues of climate change and just sustainable development, and then we have this really sticky experience. Um, I had a, a professor, a colleague of ours, refer to it as, as sticky, and I think that that's really appropriate of the sticky experience of seeing it, you know, not just talking about it, but being there and seeing it. And I think that's really long lasting in terms of the attitude and the behavior change in, in the students who are participating and want to learn more or just engage more with um, the effects of climate change. Um, so this program, again, this is our, our largest, um, one of our oldest, and I'm excited for Amy to talk a little bit more about her experience from the faculty perspective of why she decided to bring students to Iceland, um, why she wanted to bring students to Iceland with the Green Program. And, and what our program is able to do to complement the faculty perspective of what she's trying to bring to her students. So those are our four programs. I'm gonna go through some other programming components before I get to the university partnerships section and, and then hand it over to Amy. But I just again wanna remind everybody that we'll be leaving time at the end for all of your questions. I'm sure you have some, so do just send them into the chat bar. Um, and we'll, we'll get to as many and hopefully all of them if we can at the end of, of the presentation. So I talked a little bit about this before, but a really key part of the Green Program is leadership development and the development of an entrepreneurial mindset and encouraging students to think creatively and engage with the SDGs and sustainability in a way that has them thinking about how they would address it, how they would fix it, how they would become a part of the solution, and also development of, of teamwork um, in interdisciplinary approaches because you know solving things like climate change or um, tackling sustainable development goals and all around the world is going to take an interdisciplinary approach. It's going to take everybody, not just certain academic majors or students. So that's the mindset behind the Capstone Project. And as you know, just to remind you, I mentioned it a bit earlier, um, the students are introduced to the Capstone Project when they arrive on the program and they're tasked with the goal of coming up with an entrepreneurial solution to tackle a pressing issue in sustainable development. They will do it in groups, so developing that teamwork approach to solving sustainable development issues. And they'll work on it throughout the week with a few opportunities for feedback on what they're developing before their final presentation of, of what they came up with. Um, we encourage students to be as creative as possible, so students will come up with all kinds of ideas. Um, we encourage them to really think outside the box with what they're doing. Some of them are really remarkable ideas and students, alumni of our program have even gone on to present these 
to their university as part of a later project, but even also to different organizations after graduation. Um, and we also have alumni who have turned their capstone project into their own company. So it's been really exciting to see the impact of the capstone projects in not only the soft and hard skill development component of the program, but also to their long term professional development. Um, again, we, we have a lot of, of focus on the skills development, the soft skills development, and training students to um, think creatively on their feet. Um, so the program is engineered in a way through um, glacier hikes, camping, tea ceremony, homestays, um, and the capstone projects and all the things sprinkled in to specifically try and develop and, and challenge their comfort zone and, and, and foster that, that personal growth. Um, we keep a, a close tab on the outcomes in their professional growth, but also, also through surveys of our university partners and student alumni. And time and again, these are the things that they can come back to us. Reporting has really been um, pivotal in the growth of, of their students. They mentioned time and again, the leadership development, the getting them outside of their comfort zone. I want to quickly mention that we are aware COVID is happening and that that throws a little bit of a wrench in some people's travel plans. I'm sure I'm not the only person who had some dreams of travel this summer that are delayed or rescheduled indefinitely because of COVID. Um, and we were able to really innovate quickly with our global partners to offer an alternate option for anyone who was interested to travel this summer or signed up to travel this summer and is interested to engage with all of these topics and locations until we're cleared to travel on site. Um, so we call this our Learn Now Travel Later program. All throughout this summer, students were able to learn from our global institutional partners um, and engage with a lot of the topics and the instruction, the collaboration and the capstone projects with their peers virtually while still having that sticky on-site experience available to them once we're able to travel again. So for um, the summer cohort, for example, they'll be traveling um, in winter and we are keeping close tabs on further developments, but for now they're, tra they're scheduled to travel this winter. Um, this model was actually recently awarded a, a prize by Go Overseas for being one of the top eight virtual study abroad programs as developed as a response to COVID. So if anyone has um, questions or you want to read more about what's available to your students while COVID is happening, I'm happy to talk more about the Learn Now Travel Later model. Again, just um, thinking a lot about the impact of the Green Program, here are some more snippets of reviews um, that we get from students. Really high reviews for the adventure component, the industry exposure and access. Time and again, we get feedback from students and engineers and people who are you know, learning about things in the classroom, but really appreciate the ability to be on site to tour facilities, to put on a hard hat, to get out there and be there in the real world developing and um, being exposed to the topics they learn about in the classroom. We also recently had a study done by uh, the Graduate School of Uppsala University. Um, Jess, I think, has, a, has some, a link to that study that she can send into the chat for anyone curious to read more about what this study reported, but they wanted to they had generally, before they knew about the Green Program, been interested to study the best methods for learning about sustainable development. Um, and in doing this research, they had come across the Green Program and wanted to um, study what we do and really pick apart the program and, and figure out whether or not this was an effective method for obtaining a really comprehensive understanding of sustainability issues. Um, so we've got a really, a comprehensive uh, study done by Uppsala University that was just completed and are really proud of the outcomes that they reported in, in this study. So just, li just link to it and you guys are welcome to read more about it. Um, but overwhelming um, evidence that students on the program are able to engage, understand, and then remain motivated with sustainability mindsets, behavioral, academic mindset um, across academics, their behavior, their personal life, um, and then in their careers in, in different professional pursuits. Um, and here's some more quick statistics to illustrate that as well. So 
99% of students say that TGP, the green program, refine their purpose professionally, personally, and academically. Um, and four out of five alumni say they were asked about the experience specifically in a job interview. Um, so again, developing sustainability leaders for the workforce, that's what we're all about. We are really proud of our alumni pool who are working in a variety of different capacities of leading uh, organizations everywhere from GE to Nike to NASA to Tesla to Boeing. Um, and we really prioritize, as I mentioned earlier, remaining engaged with our alumni. We continue to support their professional development through um, weekly career connection emails that connects them with recent um, hirings in the field and where possible we'll connect them to the hiring manager, um, all part of our alumni network often. Um, we also will have professional development events and opportunities. We offer a lot of mentorship uh, personally to our alumni. We, for example, had recently a virtual networking opportunity. So all of these young professionals working at everywhere from NASA to Nike to recent graduates looking for a job are given the space to connect with each other. Um, we also have lots of opportunities for students to remain active and engaged on campus. So we have a really strong global network of TGP ambassadors who are on their campus promoting and engaging with topics of sustainability and are talking about their experience with the green program. Um, and we also have a green mentors program for recent graduates of the of, uh, university who are able to be profession act as professional mentors to students who might still be at university. So university partnerships, um, we work with universities in a variety of different ways. We welcome individual students onto our program from, I think we've had students participate from over 470, maybe 500 at this point universities. Um, and we're willing to work with any student interested and, and motivated to engage with our programs on an individual level. In my role at the Green Program, I work with our university partners and relationships, which looks like a lot of different things, although with the similar motivation of bringing the Green Program in to really innovate their portfolio of global programs, having a program that's focused on sustainability to developing that leadership and the sustainable development goals engagement, again, across any and all majors, we're seeing increasing interest from um, any people anywhere from the political science school to the business school and everywhere in between. Um, of course, we also work with a lot of different study abroad offices to add our programs as um, a partner in a variety of different models. So what do those models look like? What does it mean to be a university partner? Uh, I would, we would split it into four different categories. So one way that you could be a university partner is to just be an affiliate partner. Um, that would mean that your campus pre-approves the green program, you become familiar with the model, with the programs, perhaps you've pre-approved the credit, we can work with you on developing credit for your students. We have a lot of proactive reporting before, during, and after the program on what your students are doing. You'll have a very direct point of contact for support at the Green Program. We're able to develop group pricing and discounts for you and faculty members should they become involved. Um, lots of support and risk management on site again, and we're able to report back to you anything that happens on site immediately to work with your parents as well. And then we're also to support, we're also here to support um, getting the word out on your campus. I, I've worked previously at a study abroad office and I know how understaffed and busy all of you can be and I'm here to be the extension of your office and to support you with the development of marketing materials, um, content descriptions of the program, hosting events, co-hosting events, whatever you need from us. We're here to really support the um, launching and the marketing and the advising that goes into any program. So that would be an affiliate partner, a faculty-led partner, for example, Amy, who I'm gonna pass it off to shortly. Um, they function in a lot of different ways and um, the general idea is that any faculty from any different department is able to take the core of the green program and use that as a way to enhance the course and the course outcomes that they want for their students. So we'll have faculty that work with us 
um, and go to the program. We also have a lot of faculty members who work very closely with us to um, provide our program to their students, but they don't always travel to the location. They might hang back, um, but it can look like a lot of different things. It has all the benefits of an affiliate partner, all of that risk management, the on-site support, a lot of the enrollment support, the advising, um, that all comes into the faculty-led component. But we're able to work with you to figure out what is needed for your classroom and, and add our program component to that. Similarly, the embedded course is also something that is developed in partnership with a lot of different university partners, um, specifically though faculty members and, and people in different academic departments. Um, what the embedded course looks like, you know, especially since we're a short term program that can fit into the winter break or the spring break um, or the May master even, we'll have a lot of faculty members um, like we do at the engineering school at NC State who will have a semester long course that they teach to their campus and then there'll be a May master global component or a spring break global component where as part of their semester long course for credit at NC State, um, students go abroad with the Green Program to get that hands-on experience in a global context. That's something that we're seeing increasing requests for, actually. Um, it's become a really popular way to enhance a semester-long course at your campus. Um, you can see uh, our case study on the side here with Haley Sankey from Penn State University. She's in the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences. She teaches as part of their World Campus virtual instruction program as well. And she actually won an award for uh, the program that she developed with us in this embedded course approach, where she has her virtual program talking about earth and mineral sciences, talking about um, the environment that students are participating at Penn State. And then she has students, they're actually able to choose whether they'll take their global component with us in Iceland or Peru as part of that credit. Um, and then another model for partnering with the Green Program, we're always open to ideas. If you don't see anything here that you think um, would be really interesting or a good way for us to collaborate, by all means, we're always open to hear what that might look like. Um, but some specific examples of our innovation partners would be uh, joint master's degrees. So we work with the Antioch University of New England um, we developed, we co-developed with them a comprehensive master's course. It's a virtual course um, where students are taken abroad to three different program locations throughout the master's program. Um, and so we'll, their faculty will teach the course and then in between their semesters, they're doing, it's sticking in a different green program location experience. Um, another uh, innovation uh, project that we have in the works is professional certification programs. Um, we work and we host a lot of young professionals who are welcome to join the program. Um, and so that's another innovation uh, partnership that we're happy to look into with university or corporate partners. Um, again, I'm sure there's a lot of questions. Stick them into the chat bar. We'll get to them at the end. But with no further ado, I'm gonna pass the mic over to Amy Long now to talk about her partnership program with us in Iceland. Okay, hello everybody. Um, I know we are running out of time, so I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible, but I'm also a talker, so forgive me ahead of time. Um, so just to give you a quick background, I mentioned in the chat that I am um, faculty at UNC Wilmington in the Environmental Sciences Department. Um, like that faculty-led option and the embedded options that Megan just spoke about, um, I have so far been doing faculty-led um, groups. So this image is my, my first crew, my 2017 crew. It was 15 students total plus a grad student. Um, we had a fantastic time. Um, so that what I've been doing, and you can go ahead and advance. Can I advance, Megan, or do you have to advance? Thank you. Go ahead, and you, you can go to the next slide. Um, and then this is my crew from last summer. This is my 2019 crew. It was just seven of us that year, um, but I'll get to that in a second. So 
for my faculty led classes, I know there was a question in the chat earlier about faculty and staff being able to go. The answer is yes. Um, I'm getting older. I don't know how much my students want me there anymore, but, but I want to be there, um, especially because I've changed what my faculty led program looks like um, every time I've gone. Uh, I was supposed to offer one for the winter trip, but our university has stopped to all um, study abroad through that time period. So hopefully next winter, if not um, January may or may not happen, but I think we're, I think we're behind the eight ball on January. But um, so just to give you an example of what my faculty led programs look like, I first found out about the green program through a poster in our hallway and they were advertising the, the sustainable energy components that used to be the primary and only focus of, of the Iceland program. And since then it's morphed to a total sustainability sort of look, looking at tourism, um, energy and, and other sustainability initiatives. Um, but so when I contacted um, Melissa and others at TGP, they had an opportunity to take some faculty on kind of a mini five-day sightseeing expedition where we integrated into one of the student-led groups so that we could see how it worked. I'd never taken students abroad before. Um, so I, I, I first got to go on a faculty professional development sort of opportunity that I would, I, I've been trying to do the same for Peru and the timing just never works right for me. Um, but so that's how I first saw it was in 2016. And so I then, with the help of Melissa's um, staff, I was able to say, okay, I want to offer this for my students, but I want to go there for two and a half weeks. I want to piggyback off of your program and build my expertise and my interests around that. Um, and so that's what I did in 2017. I built two or three days on in the beginning with my students and we focused, I'm a restoration ecologist. So we focused primarily on ecology and geology of the country. Um, and then we joined in for the, the nine to 10 day um, TGP program. And then we wrapped up with another, like th I think it was another three days of my own programming. We got to that way add on my expertise where my, my faculty led course focused on restoration. So I know there was a question about reforestation efforts in Iceland. That was my big selling point is we get to be the Lorax in Iceland. How cool is that? Um, and so you'll see a couple pictures from that in a moment. But before I show you that one, you can go ahead and advance for me, Megan, or did you? Did you tell me that you didn't let me do that? Thank you. Um, so before I get to like my, my love of TGP, um, I love TGP how it's just designed in the first place. So this is an example. This is looking at the big um, geothermal power plant that powers Reykjavik and provides their hot water. The, the, as an environmental scientist, many of you seem to be engineers. Maybe you have access like this to facilities already that I just, as a restoration ecologist, I didn't know was there. Um, but as a restoration ecologist and environmental science students integrated in, we're just blown away with the amount of access we get on these site tours. Um, I didn't include a picture. I wish I had of getting down under the hydro power plants and seeing the water rushing in. Um, you can always tell the engineers from the environmental science people with who gets like, oh my gosh, this is insane. Um, but for me, this was amazing. The, the access is unparalleled. You can go ahead and click the next one. Thank you. So we get to see a lot of um, sites, so geothermal power plants, hydro power plants. Um, the, the, that's the main focus that I've been for my two trips I've gone with our students. Those have been the two that we've really focused on. We've seen the wind turbines, but unfortunately, uh, 2017, we weren't able to stop there because the weather just wasn't good. Um, but then there's the adventure travel component, right? And that's one of the beauties of TGP, in my opinion, is that they, every single thing that's done is done with such intention and such level of detail. And students think, oh, we're just going on this wonderful hike and isn't it great to be out on these glaciers and 
these lava fields and land that is literally only 10 years old. Um, and, and they're, they're weaving this love affair of the students with the, with the environment, whether it's Iceland or Peru or Japan, um, and, and everything on their programs are led by um, native people. So our Iceland tour people, our TGP staff, and this phenomenal adventure travel company that they partner with. Um, so there was a question about safety and, and things like that. I can tell you in Iceland, you're, you're with the most well-trained, it's well beyond first responders because of the, the training that they all go through in Iceland. I've never felt so safe in such an unstable environment in my life. We were literally going to hike um, glacial volcanoes and it's exhilarating and you think of all the what if something happens, um, but you also know that you're in the best hands in the world and the students just have an amazing experience. So the, the adventure travel side, there was a quote that Megan read earlier about how the TG, TGP program does such a phenomenal job integrating personal challenge and team building. And that is so very true. Like in my 2019 crew, I had one student who's an advisee of mine, I love her to death, very high anxiety, student um, and she almost didn't come she almost stopped several things and on this glacier hike in particular i just remember the exhilaration on her face going i don't believe i just did this i never thought i'd be able to do this and just seeing the empowerment that the the team talking her through getting up that glacier um that's it just makes it all that the much that much more wonderful. Okay, next slide, please. So this brings me to my faculty-led components that TGP has been just miraculous with working with me on. So as an environmental scientist, it's very cross-disciplinary. I have the ability to change what I'm teaching based off of the news. That's why I like doing these faculty-led where I build my own program dates either before or after their existing programs. And so what you see here on the left is uh, my one student, Colin, from last summer. Our students in that particular small group of seven had, we have a very, we're, we're an ocean, an ocean side, um, campus. So we have a lot of fisheries interest in our group. And so my focus instead of restoration ecology, um, like it was with my first group, ended up being more like sustainable fishing um, and sustainable ecotourism built around their coastal systems. So on my own private days, I was able to get um, a sightseeing and fishing trip done. We actually did that as a large group in 2017, just a whale watching expedition. So TGP was, is phenomenal with working with me within their program, if possible. Um, it's not always possible, but Melissa's team has been great with saying, okay, Amy, what's your wish list? What they're always trying to perfect and, and increase the impact of the program. Um, so you take my, my own ability to program my own days and integrate that. This other image of students walking is with the TGP experience. It's, it's seamless. Um, my students were concerned that we were on the ground for several days before they integrated into the big group and they were concerned that they would get clicky and they wouldn't be able to integrate into a larger group. Um, it didn't happen. Like two of those students are mine and two aren't. They, they integrate right in. The melding of the engineering students with the business students, with the education students and the environmental students just works beautifully, especially in that group capstone program. Um, next slide, please. So this is just another, some of my favorite um, pictures from my 2017 crew. So this is an example of giving ideas to the TGP team as to what you want to get out of a faculty-led program. This is when I said, I really want, I really want to plant trees. I know they're doing reforestation efforts. I want to plant trees. And Melissa and the team were like, that's such a fantastic idea. Do you mind if we incorporate it into the entire TGP program and not just your extra days? 
And so that's what they did. Um, and that kind of helped spur this idea of, of every trip when possible should have some sort of community engagement focus like this. So here we are being the Lorax, planting um, birch and fir trees on a lava field. Um, so I, every time I go back to Iceland, I hope to see those little guys getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But that was a memorable experience that all 15 of my students and the entire TGP students, I'm sure, will remember. Next slide, please. And then this was also that same year, 2017. I, I was restoration heavy because it is my focus. This was um, just my group. We continued our restoration ecology focus by volunteering with, with, with an organization that's basically like the Sierra Club. And so we were removing, you might be able to see this purple flower. It's Alaskan lupin. It's horribly invasive in Iceland. There's a lot of controversy about it. But this particular organization, the largest one in the country, is actively trying to remove it from edges of protected um, areas. So we spent a day, um, our, only, our only cloudy day that year, removing lupin. Next slide, please. I've got two more slides after this one. I had to include this one because although it doesn't give you the typical diet and food experience of Iceland, it's by far almost all of our favorite places to go. And it's a greenhouse. It's a completely self-contained greenhouse where they grow mostly tomatoes and cucumbers, um, their herbs, etc. And you have the most heavenly bowl of tomato soup you've ever had in your life. Um, I can tell you their secret ingredient. They put mango chutney in it. I'm allergic to mango, so they make me my own special bowl every time I go. <laughs> um, so TGP is in charge of making sure those sorts of things happen. It's just a little glimpse as to how personalized and um, on top of everything TGP is and their partners in country. This particular idea is so... Um, so incredible to my EVS students that I've actually got a student from that 2017 group who has actively been trying to recreate this here back in North Carolina. So I, he checked in with me about four months ago. He had a piece of property that he was actively trying to purchase and, and develop himself. So again, that idea of those capstone projects being truly meaningful, they are. Uh, many of them do go on to actually implement them. Um, and having access to talking to the people themselves that are responsible for these industries and these um, technologies and whatever it is, is truly unparalleled in my opinion. Okay, last two are just pretty shots. Um, I am, like I said, an ecologist, I love plants. So <laughs> whether it's like the grand, huge, um, landscapes of glaciers and volcanoes down to the minute tiny flowers of um of all of these great little organisms you see it's just it was a beautiful experience i find something new every time this plant on the right i i'm gonna blank on its name right now but i first saw and learned about this plant in iceland I took a trip with my family to Nova Scotia last summer, and I found this plant in Nova Scotia, and it just blew my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like Iceland in, in Nova Scotia. So it's kind of cool. And then my last one, just to finish. Um, this is, I, Megan and Melissa kind of laughed at me earlier because I sent them a bunch of pictures. I was like, I can't cull them down to five. I sent her like 19, and I think four of them had people jumping, but it's because we're so excited and everything is that wow factor. Um, again, whether it's integrated into the big TGP programs or working with your own students piggybacking onto their program, it's been a remarkable experience and um, I, I look forward to working with TGP forever as long as I can. So I hope that gives you some insight. I know there's probably lots of questions. Um, to answer, Alexa has a question about cost. It does change every year because of what we do and we don't do. Um, the one thing I didn't even mention is that TGP is, it, it, they themselves totally built my 2017 class for me based off of my wish list um, in 2019. 
I was, because it was my third time in country, I was able to do a little few things on my own, but still relied very heavily on their expertise and their connections and their recommendations. Um, I, and I can't, the, I know my small group was actually like a thousand dollars less than my large group, but I think we also did a heck of a lot more with my, my 2017 group. Um, the way my program runs and my university runs, my two week to two and a half week class is normally about between a thousand to fifteen hundred more than what the TGP program price is. So, thanks, Amy. Um, just to piggyback on that quickly, I know that we're already at one o'clock, but there's a few questions that came in that we didn't get to and I just want to address them quickly before wrapping up and saying thank you. So for um, the price, it varies by location because everything is included like accommodation, transport in countries from Japan to Peru to Iceland to Nepal. It does vary a bit, but each of the program locations will hover around $4,000 for the program. Um, and again, it, it will vary a bit depending on program components. If you want to add additional components as a faculty member, that'll that'll fluctuate the price a bit as well. Um, there was a question about health and safety. So this is paramount in our minds for all of the programs. It's we have staff on site and not just academic partners, but local partners like Amy, Meisland, um, Amy mentioned our partners in Iceland, um, who are the national response team um, and when they're not the TGP response team for any disasters. So really well-trained partners in each location who are there to um, assist in the case of any unfortunate scenario that could arise. And we also do a lot of comprehensive vetting of each of our community partners. And we have staff um, who are there to cook meals, adjust meals, take into account any pre-existing medical or health conditions and accommodations that students need. Um, and for health and safety, we do have a manual outlining everything that we do on that front that I'd be happy to send if you want to follow up to me after and, and just request that. Um, and I think we had another question about uh, working with community college students. Yes, we, we definitely work with community college students and are happy to explore how we can adapt um, to your credit model and bring our programs to your campus. But we have lots of students come to us from community colleges eager to explore um, sustainable development goals abroad and that's something that we're definitely able to do and would love to talk about more. Um, and I'm sorry that we don't have time for any more questions. Um, I want to be respectful of the rest of your day and, and leave you now, but uh, for any questions and to connect afterward, I do encourage you to reach out. Um, you can find me just at Megan at thegreenprogram.com and I'll follow up. We'll have a recording of this and lots of links and additional material uh, that we'll be happy to send your way. So uh, without further ado, thank you everybody for attending and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.